Hello friends and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk to you about a telescope that is really affordable and it's powerful. It's the Celestron Nextart 130SLT computerized telescope. Now this telescope goes from anything from 500 to 330. I bought it for about 400 in uh, Amazon.com and um, you can find it even for 330. The price has gone down significantly and I will never recommend you to buy it directly from Celestron. Always buy it from a reputable site that uh, allows you to return the telescope if in case it's defective or has a problem. To be honest with you, I kind of returned this one about three times. I returned my Celestron is SLT 133 times. And that's because, first of all, well, thank God I bought it in Amazon.com. So Amazon is, has been really good to me and it's really easy to return. And even though the box of this telescope is huge, um, it's it's not huge, but it's it's the size, uh, it's double the size of the telescope as you see it here, uh, and it's a little bit heavy. I was able to just repack everything and send it back. Now you're maybe wondering why I returned it three times, and that is because uh, uh, upon upon inspection, I checked that the secondary mirror had a had different scratches. Now um, I am a little bit particular about the things I buy and uh, sometimes obsessive so also that's why I'm doing video reviews I guess but um, I just I tell you that I returned it three times to warn you that sometimes uh, you had to inspect things and in this case inspect the primary and the secondary mirror for scratches uh, on the third time it had no scratches but I saw a lot of dust in it so I, I was wondering if probably it was my fault uh, that um, not to, or if it was something something normal to have scratches sometimes. So I called Celestron directly, and they told me that the mirrors are not perfect and they may have scratches sometimes. So I and I asked them then what to do if they have scratches. Should I return it or or should I just uh, have to deal with it or maybe change brand? And they told me that if when you do the observation through the telescope, you can see the scratch then the scratch is significant and you should return the telescope. So this is the thing that you should do, you see scratches, check, check your telescope out, see if you can see them when you are looking at, through the telescope and then return it. And of course, make sure you bought it in a place when you can return it like Walmart uh, or Amazon.com. I really strongly suggest Amazon.com because we send the box all the way to your home and if you have to return it, they you can just print the self-returning uh, sticker attached to your box and never never throw your box away because you may need it uh, leave it for at least for a, for a few weeks before you decide to depart with it so in case something happens you can return the item with no problem so okay that's my little story and let's, let's talk more about the telescope uh, the specification of this telescope well, well you can see it's not that big uh, it's, it's not really heavy the tripod is made of aluminium, so it's uh, it's light. Now it's a 5.12 inches, or um, at 130 millimeters. That's what that's why it's called 130 of aperture. And you know, in the telescope, the aperture is one of the most important things. For uh, the more aperture, the more magnification, the closer you can see objects. So this this is a 5.12 inches. So it's a respectable size for the price. And it's a Newtonian ref reflector. So Newtonian reflectors are famous for being the most cost-effective um, telescopes, meaning that they give you the most for your money or the most aperture for your money. Now, other things that you may be interested in is that in the focal length, that's a 650 millimeters or 26 inches, and the focal ratio is five, and um, it has a finder scope. Uh, it's a motorized. Al alcinium um, base or the mount, it's, it's motorized alcinium. Now it comes with different software like the Sky X First Light Edition and the Next Start um, Astronomy software that I really didn't use it and I don't think it's good enough or uh, there are so many out there that are free that are better that you can stick with 
free software, or although it's good to have the software from Celestron, it weighs about it weighs about 8.16 kilograms or 18 pounds. So you see, it's heavy, but not that heavy. You can carry it with ease. And uh, well, there are other specifications, you know. But and and, and for example, the optical coatings are aluminium, and um, it has uh, again, it's a fully computerized. It can be flash upgraded, so it's it's good because you can do updates to the software. And it has a different size and different tracking rates, sidereal, solar, and lunar, at different speeds. And you know, that's about it for the specifications. Now I'm going to take you in, into a tour, a more close, detailed tour of it. So, as you can see now, the tripod here is uh, retracted. This is the first level that the, the tripod goes. The tripod goes up double to make it go um, stand twice as tall as it's standing now. But I'm keeping it like this because it's kind of easy to just uh, put away and it's less uh, visible when I put it in my bedroom or my living room. Now, as you can see, this is the motor and uh, it's uh, everything is contained in here. Now, it has an aux, aux port here where you can connect uh, to a computer, for example. And this is like a hand control and I show, I'm going to show you the hand control and this is very important, this is the DC-AC uh, plug so you can connect the telescope to an outlet and uh, not having to use batteries and this is the power button right here I'm going to turn it on soon but I just want to give you a detailed tour uh, also here this is a tray that this, this detaches, you, you turn it on, you spin it and it detaches from the tri tripod so it's very good and uh, let's go forward here this is a finder scope. The finder scope is laser. And you, you turn it here. I don't know if you can see it. I just turn it on. But uh, anyway, it has different settings and it has an internal battery, like a watch battery. This is a place where you put your finder scopes or your eyepieces. So it's, it's, it's detaches and you put the finer pieces. Now, the good, cool thing about this is that this telescope allows you for two inches eyepieces. All this, all this system here detaches completely. This, this comes apart, this comes apart, and uh, you know, it's, it's really nice. I can show it to you if you are interested in a different video how everything can detach. Now, uh, this is the cover. You just open it, and this is the internal of the telescope. And you can see the mirror there. I'm going to put this back. Now it has a nice snap. I'm going to go and show you the... This is the... This is the handpiece uh, where you can just... Uh, you see it has... It's the traditional Nexstar Celestron handpiece with the align, enter, undo, the different keys and the different functions. I'm going to put this back. Now it goes nicely attached here and it has a holder on the base that I can show you. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to show you something that most video reviews don't show you. I'm just going to move this a little bit. Rotating the telescope with one hand, that's not a good idea. There you go. So, you see this? This is where the battery goes. This, we are on the base of the telescope. So, if you press this, it is exposed the battery compartments. This is the battery compartments. I'm using IKEA batteries because they are cheap, but you have to put eight batteries in here. And that's kind of a drag and also makes the telescope a little bit heavier. But it goes eight batteries and they don't go that quickly though. I have been uh, leaving it there for a while, but let me also show you how this goes away. This detaches like this and comes out. So eight batteries. So you're gonna have to spend some money with in batteries, but again they last for a while. I think with regular observation they can last you a few weeks for sure. But uh, you always have the option of the uh, power. So I'm just gonna turn it on.
you see this it has a nice light and after you turn it on the, the, the handheld is gonna turn on next time ready so let's let's put it into action so you can see how it spins how easy it spins so okay this is the telescope now I'm gonna just uh, move move it with these arrows okay so this is the maximum speed it says speed number nine and it's rotating the cool thing is that you can spin it in both directions at the same time just press the both keys like this which you can do it with one finger see it's going left and up at the same time now it's pretty cool and you know it's uh, I used to have a regular telescope that was not motorized and after you change to a motorized one there is no way back it's really accurate because you have nine rates of speed you want to change the rating of speed, you, all you have to do is come here and, and press rate and I press rate and then you see the, the number will blink and you can put 6 for example and now it's at 6 notice how slowly it's moving right now it's moving and, and it's not even noticeable but you can hear some hiss from the engine so we change the rate again to 9 and now it's, it's moving fast Of course, I'm suspecting my batteries are running low, so it's uh, not so snappy as it used to be when the batteries were fresh, and this also might be an issue. Okay, so that's it. But, uh, you know, you can search for on the internet for the, all the functions that this control has, but I can tell you that you can um, after you align the telescope, and that's very it's very important function. I press align here and it asks you for the time and it asks you for the place and this is one thing that is annoying is that you have to put this every time you turn on your telescope it doesn't retain the time and it doesn't retain the place so after you set that up it takes a few seconds you, you have to align the telescope to a, to a known star uh, it has three different kinds of alignment a single star, uh, two stars and three stars so it's really convenient and um, so and I'm checking that it did retain my CD, but it didn't retain the time, so I take that back. It, only the time it, it doesn't retain. So uh, what I was saying is after you, you align it to the stars, you can just look for any object here uh, in the control, and it will just rotate the telescope to the correct position and, and check it out. I have to try it in action. It has failed a couple of times, but most of the times it, it was successful. So um, it, I think it's really accurate. I would totally recommend this telescope, especially for the price you can beat it. And if you want something more powerful, you have to go to, uh, you have to jump uh, twice as much, maybe in the 1,000 range instead of in the 300, 400 range. So for the money, it's great. Uh, in maybe future videos, I'm gonna. If there is interest about this telescope on the internet and enough views, I will probably put uh, more videos about it. I uh, will show, show it to you in action. Also, maybe try to do something called a digicam that is recording what I can see through the telescope in the computer. And well, l last thing is that you can see this little balancing here tool. So if, if I move the telescope like this, it will lose the balance. So this will tell you if the telescope what it's it's flat, it's laying flat, so that's very good. A final critique to the telescope is that since the base is really light, if you are having observations outside and there is a strong wind, the, tele the telescope will move, will oscillate with the wind, and uh, it's gonna move what you're looking at in your eyepiece. So it, it may be a little bit difficult to observe objects when it's windy outside. Now, a solution that I found for that is just get a brick or something heavy and put it right here. That will add you a lot of stability, a lot of weight, and uh, this can take a lot of weight too, by the way. So put a brick here or something heavy and the telescope won't, won't uh, shake so much. But it will still shake because this base here that you see is attached only by this on this part and uh, the, the tube itself is light so it will shake that's one thing 
that I wanted to mention and I almost forgot. All right, that's all for today. This this, this video shows you how the Celestron Nexstar 130 SLT, a very solid and recommended telescope for entry level to mid level range. Uh, stay tuned for more videos about this Celestron telescope and others, and please subscribe. Thank you so much.